Good evening, how are we doing today? I hope that you're in a good place. Today I'm going to talk about dealing with criticism, something we all have to face from time to time. Do like, leave comments, we can all learn from each other. Walk the line between overreacting and underreacting. Every one of us has a tender underbelly of our psyche. Everyone has something they're sensitive about where even a gentle poke can feel more like a whack. Comments don't slide off our back like a duck's back, should I say. Rather, we feel more like a sitting duck at times. But criticism is an inevitable part of life. And hearing reasonable negative feedback without overreacting is certainly a life skill that is worth having. If you can hear fair criticism of our actions without taking it personally, not only do we escape feeling hurt or shamed, but we also keep criticism from escalating. By contrast, if we think we're, we're hurt and our feelings have been hurt, our back goes up and we create conflict and even more pain for everybody involved. So how can we take things less personally, both to the benefit of ourselves and also to others? How can we toughen up without becoming hard-hearted? Let's start with two tips I think work. How to reinterpret the critic whether it's your boss, your mother-in-law, or even a noisy neighbour, or someone you love and trust. In fact, the crux of the matter is, consider the source. Would you be likely to drink water from a mountain spring as from a puddle underneath a dustbin? Of course not. But why? Aside from the fact that you're smart, it's because the source matters. The same thing goes for criticism. Does the critique come from somebody you like and respect? Does this person know you well? Or is this someone who knows you, but they always shoot, shoot off their mouth? They have this, this, the finesse of a sledgehammer. Has this person ever been truthful with you with their interactions? In short, you take criticism very differently if it was presented with care from somebody you trust versus somebody who shouted it out from a moving car. Consider the source, which will help you to decide whether to take their feedback to heart or to take it with a big grain of salt. Give critics another chance, but not unlimited chances. People say mean things, people can be dumb, people have no filter. It's only human to make mistakes and say something critical or insulting. But if it happens again and again and again, it's not a mistake anymore. It's a pattern. To paraphrase, critique made, made once, it's on you. Critique twice, that's on me. But if it's repeated insult without an apology or acknowledgement, it's time to speak up or limit contact with these people. Three strikes doesn't necessarily mean you're out, especially if you still have to work or be related to them. But it's definitely time to draw a line to draw some, some of those boundaries. You know, we're talking about boundaries. Like boundaries are very important. Next up, four tips about how you can work on yourself to stake the sting out of the criticism. As they say, the only person you can change is yourself. Heed the double-edged sword of, but I shouldn't say that. Individuals hypersensitive to criticism often have a high moral standards. They have a strict moral code, and their values run deep. And that's a good thing, to be honest. But this is one of the few places where strong values can have a downside. How dare they say that? That's wrong. She can't say that. That's not how things should be. All those things may be true. But whatever statement hurt you was still uttered. It was still said. The fact that the critic shouldn't or can't is moot. Pretend a dog deposited a steaming bundle right next to your please pick up your pet sign. It should have, ha shouldn't have happened, but you have to deal with it nonetheless. So getting unfair and rude criticism is extremely similar to what I've just said. Even if you shouldn't be there, you shouldn't have to deal with it. Feeling annoyed and offended may be warranted, but it's not helpful. Remember, even if you walk the line and follow the rules, you can't control whether others break them. In short, focus your attention on 
the content of the criticism, not whether or not it should have or shouldn't have happened. Question your own perfectionism. There is a straight line between hypersensitivity and perfectionism. Individuals who take things personally often work really hard to be blameless, flawless or excellent, precisely so no one will criticise them. And when they get negative feedback, it feels like it blows all they've worked on all away, all their hard work's gone. If this does sound familiar, you can reframe this in a few ways. One is to incorporate getting better at hearing criticism into your perfectionism, getting better at receiving feedback, aim higher when it comes to dealing with commentary, be overachiever when it comes to facing haters, and another challenging way is to change your perfectionism. Dare to accept yourself with all your cracks and faults, warts and all. Slowly realising that you are good enough, just as you are, takes time and work. But simply acknowledging your buttons can be a powerful first step. If you were bullied in the past, you may be hypersensitive to comments that remind you of being thrown against the school locker at school. If you were pigeonholed by your parents as being dumb, um, the crazy one, the problem child, you may have worked your butt off to prove you're not anything like that. Any critique that brings forth old hurts, cuts, cuts extra deep. But just being aware that something is a hot button issue for you is the first step in owning it and eventually healing it. I should have said, be honest with yourself when creating scenes in your head. We've all experienced getting bullied or criticised and then hours later, we're coming up with some good things what we should have said and done at the time. We wish we'd said it in that, in that particular moment. We would play the scene in our head, spinning it out. What we wanted to have happened instead of what actually went down, what actually happened. But replaying these scenes in your head is a two-sided coin. In some cases, it can be extremely helpful if you replay the scene and imagine getting what you needed in that moment, feeling empowered, soothed or safe, it can be extremely worthwhile. And a worthwhile daydream, in fact. But when you do it with a qualified therapist, it's called imaginary rescripting. And it's a really good tool to use for treating people with um, trauma or trauma survivors. But however, in other cases, replaying a scene can be problematic. Specifically, if you imagine revenge and fantasizing on hurting people. At this point, reimagining crosses the line from empowering you to being egotistical. So be aware when you play these scenes in your head, if you're doing it to soothe yourself and empower yourself, carry on. But if you're doing it to dominate your imagined enemy, consider trying some other healthier coping strategy. Thank you for taking time to listen to this talk. I really hope that you found it useful. If so, share it with friends and family. Leave comments and likes. And do take care of yourself until next week. Bye for now.